Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to give you a few notes over some binomial settings. Okay, a couple things you need to know. When we need to, when we are looking for the expected value, okay, for a binomial setting, you always multiply n times p. Remember, p is your probability, okay, and n is your number of trials. So the number of trials, okay? And I'm going to go over that in a second. Now, also, remember, we talked about this today. So binomial CDF. Let's say I want to find out the probability that x is less than 7. Well, in this case, since I know x is less than 7, that's just like finding the probability to the left. So I want all these numbers right here. So that means I want to do this. I want binomial CDF. And you always choose this number. So I want 7, since it's included, comma, whatever the probability is, or sorry, whatever n is, and then, of course, your probability. And that's what you put in the calculator. So that's 7. Now, what if I wanted uh, the probability of um, x is less or is greater than 3, but less than or equal to let's say 17, okay? So let's say it's between these two. Well, that means it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, dot, 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 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Let's say it's like that, okay? Now, I know that x is going to be greater than 3. So that means it's going to include 4 but it's going to be less than 17, but including 17. So I want all this right here. I want all this area. I want the probability that it's going to be in between here. That means I have a binomial CDF here. So this is binomial. Let's say this is binomial uh, of 17, and then whatever N and P are. And then this right here would be to the left. So this is a binomial CDF of 3 in comma P. So whatever the N is and P is, I will probably give you. So now what you do is you take the largest one, which is this. So binomial CDF of 17 in P minus the smaller one. So again, binomial uh, CDF of 3 in P. And that will give you the probability of everything in the middle. All right? Let me go over this worksheet here. This is number 18. Okay? In May 2009, Rasmussen Report survey 58%. Uh, we will assume that 58% is the true proportion. So this is our P. So P equals 0.58. Now, if we randomly select 20 adults, that's our uh, N, and ask the same question. What is the probability that we would find fewer than 10 in opposition? So I want to know the probability that X is less than 10. So the probability that X is less than 10. So basically what that looks like is this. If I had uh, 7, 8, 9, let's say dot, 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 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I want less than 10. That means I want to start at 9. So I want less than 9. So I need a binomial CDF of 9 and then whatever N and then P is. All right, binomial CDF of 9 and whatever your N is and P is. So let's go ahead and put that into play. Equals, so binomial. CDF, 9, our N happens to be 20, and our probability is 0.58. Now, when we put that in the calculator, it's going to look something like this. Okay, let's go ahead and put that in and see if we can zoom in. All right. So what that would look like in the calculator 
would be, let's go to option, stat, distribution, binomial, binomial CDF, 9, comma, 20, comma, 0.58, enter, 0 0.1705. So if y'all can see that, I'll make it three. So, so 0 0.1705. So 0 0.1705. Now, would you be surprised to find fewer? Let's change this to 10 because that's what we were looking for in opposition. Well, that means 17%, we convert that to 17%, 17% 17 of the op, uh, are in opposition. That is not unusual. Usually if it's less than 5% or close to, you know, say 1% or 2%, yeah, then it might be a, a little unusual. But for this case, it's not unusual. 